Yeah, what's good everybody? It's your boy iPod King Card here. I want to welcome you guys to a huge, huge video. I know the first question you probably have for me is, where in the hell you been? I'm sorry, man. I got life, stuff be going on. I'm sorry. Can y'all can y'all please like leave in the comment section? Ex please accept my apology. I'm sorry, man. But look, NBA 2K24 is literally down the block, up the street, over the hill. And like, if you take like two steps in that alleyway, it's right there. Like we're literally coming up on 2K season where the news is starting to drop. Leaks are starting to get announced and trying to get found out. The Reddit space going crazy with all of the information and what what's next for 2K. Listen, before we get into that, I want to tell you how I truly feel about 2K and where I want to see 2K go from here with my NBA 2K24 wish list. Now, I know what you're thinking. You've been watching my channel for a long time. You like a little bit of the opinions I give, but you say I'm not qualified to speak on the game. I don't play the game. Well, I'm going to tell you where you're wrong at. Now, when it comes to the rewards, I guess these rewards. I've hit 40 every season. Now, I know what you're saying. What about legend? I pot? Well, well, guess what? Sucker. I ain't a legend, all right? I hit legend last year. It was super easy. I loved my parrot sometimes, but this year, I just, I couldn't achieve it. I didn't want to go through that grind because that grind makes you a solo. Now, what I mean by that is I've streamed NBA 2K23 since it's come out. I've streamed on Facebook gaming almost at least 80 hours a month of NBA 2K, the content. I've also been streaming on Twitch and I have returned. Make sure you guys follow me on Twitch, but I have been playing this game since it dropped. So I know all of the gameplay issues, all of the microtransactions, all of the little lighting issues, all of the little, you know, minor bugs that need to be fixed. I know about it all. I even know about some of the hurtful things that the community has suffered as far as error codes have been going. A lot of people have lost their builds. A lot of people have put a lot of money into this game, not knowing where the end of the road was for them. So before we get into the first thing on my NBA 2K24 wish list, I want to tell you this. If you spend money on NBA 2K, any game, and you decide that you're going to come out here and make this build and your build is about to be the best build that it has ever touched the park, the rec, the pro-am, the theater, the any up ever. And then you go ahead and trash that build after two days after spending $110 on that build. Something's wrong with you. Now, what I will say is wait for people like me. And other people in the YouTube community, the TikTok community, Instagram community, and shoot, even over Twitter and Reddit, wait for us to make our build videos and then drop in the comment section, yo, what y'all think about a PG ah. And I promise you, people like me, we'll be in the comment section giving you the sauce, letting you know how much your layup need to be to get a certain badge or a certain animation so you don't have to overspend on things you don't need. All right. Now, let's go ahead and get into the NBA 2K24 wish list with the first thing on the list. And it is literally the first because it's the most important. Cross gen slash cross play. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Pie, we've been asking for this forever. Why, why 2K? Listen. I'm going to tell you why cross-gen and cross-play is probably the top priority over at 2K, just like it's been our top. Did y'all? I think Goku want to be a part of this video. He just he moved out of nowhere. Spooky. If you want to go Super Saiyan on all consoles, right? 2K. Um, What I want y'all to do is figure out a way for xbox and playstation to play together simply because it will make everything better because next gen the actual next generation of nba 2k as a whole has had very 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 low output on player base as far as games being watched games being played 
and people just sit around in the park, sit around in the city. It seems super, super populated, but it's just so much going on that people do a hundred other things before they even want to get into a park game. And what I mean by that is if we had cross play, right? And if we had a better lobby system, which I believe theater is going just fine. You don't have to tweak theater that much, but you know, we'll save that for later in this uh, wish list. But if you have it to where as though people can actually come into the park, PlayStation and Xbox, they have symbols or logos or whatever the case may be on their banners, letting you know that that player's on Xbox and this player's on PlayStation, build a lobby system or even a communication system where people can talk into their Xbox headsets, talk into their PlayStation controllers or whatever USB mic they have hooked up and actually have it to where as though if I'm walking past somebody, I can just straight up talk to them. Don't, I don't have to send them an invite to the party. I don't have to invite them to my squad. I don't have to do all of that proximity. And what I mean by proximity is I don't mean if somebody's 12 to 15 feet away from me. This should be like a simple conversation type of thing. So if I'm huddled up with three people, we all are able to talk amongst each other in very, very close proximity. And I know what y'all think. Oh, pie, pause, pause, pie. Why you got to be mad close to the my players? Because it's called proximity. The proximity should only work one to two feet. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm running past somebody, I'll be like, yo, them shoes is trash, cuz. And as I'm running away, he heard me. So now he chasing me down. That's what proximity chat should be in 2K because it would be constant communication across the board for all players. And with cross gen added to that, and cr I'm sorry, cross play added to that, man, I could just see next gen coming out of its shell. Now, when we talk about cross gen, right? 2K has told us for years. And they even did this with the last generation console, PS4. When they came out with the PlayStation 4 version, they still made the PlayStation 3 version for a few years. Now we know PlayStation had a crazy launch with PlayStation 5s. Stuff was getting stolen off the back of the truck. You know, chips was getting, you know, back ordered and stuff like that. They couldn't even build all the consoles. Now they're starting to be in stores a little bit more. But the biggest problem is people are still on last gen people don't want to give up last gen and some people even say last gen is better than next gen because you gave them some of the things from next gen and what i mean by that is you gave them the menus the builder and and other things of that nature some of the rewards you gave last gen about 43 to 52 percent of what next gen had now, of course, they don't have the city. They had, you know, the goat boat and all that type of stuff, which is great. But you should be thinking of something to build for all plat. Now, I am excluding PC. PC players, I love you. You guys are some of the, the smartest, some of the, the, the best modders and players out there in the world. And as I blink like this, Trey is probably laughing right now somewhere. But y'all got to be excluded i'm sorry pc we just can't play with y'all but playstation 4 xbox series x uh playstation 5 xbox one we should all be on the same stage we should all be playing the same game that comes out whether you want to do yearly or whether you want to do my idea from last year's wish list we need to all be able to play together because that player base right there godly every game that is a huge triple a game that has had multiple success over multiple years in the last five years have all adopted cross play and cross gen 2k i know y'all can do it i know you can and i know that that's one of your biggest priorities because you know as a company that you need it to sustain people to keep buying the game and enjoying the play of it. So now that number one is over, let's talk about number two. So 2K, I'm just gonna call the spade a spade, right? If this is ever made and you ever name it, just remember that iPod said it and that you love me. 
We need a 2K vault. I know what you're thinking. What the hell is a 2K vault? So, in recent years, 2K, you have done a very good job at allowing my team players to keep some of the content that they have gotten over the years and even port over some cards to actually use at a lower base, you know what I mean, and stuff like that for my team. Now, which I don't play my team at all. It's not that I don't like the mode. It's just that I don't have enough time for the mode. So a lot of people always say, oh, Apa, you're a my team hater. I'm not a my team hater. I literally don't have enough time. I'm a grown man, two kids, wife, job, content creation, streaming. I don't have time to play my team on top of my career because i'm trying to hit level 40 i tried for legend didn't work i got a couple of the season rewards but it's a it's a it's a a, a constant grind so if i want to play other video games that i love like apex legends like rpgs like story games i can't give 2k 100 of me i just can't do it and i know there's people out there like that that can't either but for my career, the 2K Vault, this is the biggest scope that I could put on this. Since NBA 2K14, we started getting items for my players, such as clothing, you know what I mean? Accessories and, and, and things of that nature, right? There should be a 2K Vault that allows you to keep those items across the span of the game because think about it like this i've purchased the entire drake ovo collection twice and it's never been carried over i spent real money for an item in a video game that never ported over to the next game even though it's a yearly game now the people will probably say in the comment section, well, pod, it comes out every year. You got to just cop the new stuff. You know what I'm saying? No, because there are other video games that come out yearly that allows you to keep your content across all of the platforms, all of the games leading up. And I will, I won't, I won't compare 2k to any other video game anymore. What I'm suggesting is please take that into consideration as far as, Hey, you know what? It would be nice to let them keep some content. And for people who didn't get it, they can purchase it. And I know licensing, you know what I mean? Getting those items in the game is very expensive. I completely understand that. You probably don't even make as, as much money as it costs to get that in the game. I completely understand that. But if you put a 2K vault in there and allow us to keep accessories, keep items that we purchased, especially over these seasons of like 2K23 and 2K22, and they are in 2K24, we could be like, yo, we really OGs of this. We've really been in this genre for a minute. Whereas though other people could say, oh man, I, can't, I could never get that. You feel what I'm saying? But there will be some items where when I pull up and I'm in my OVO drip, 2K can say, hey, we got the OVO joint dropping. They can reach out to me and say, yo, Pi, we, sell, we see in your collection that you have, you know, the OVO collection drip and everything like that. Can you make some content? Because we're going to be dropping some, you know what I'm saying, OVO, you know, merch and stuff like that in the store with new items too, of course, because it's a new game. Give us new items. But that just is it's perfect. It's literally perfect. I would love to just load in the 2K make my my player and everything like that and know that i'm going to the Sixers, of course first overall pick you know how i do you know what i'm saying even though they ain't got the first overall pick but i have my headband i have my sleeves i have my knee braces i have my ankle braces i have my hand tape all of those accessories i purchased last year is ported over into the new game and i don't have to worry about writing down math of vc of how much i gotta buy and how much i gotta spend and i can divulge all of that earnings or whatever I paid for a VC into my build instead of worrying about everything else. Now I know dribble moves, um, builds and stuff like that, putting those things in a vault. I know that that'll probably be a big, huge issue for 2k. And that's why that's not in there. Of course it's me y'all. 
Y'all talking to me. I would love for 2K to allow me to take my 6ix9ine build with me for the rest of my life. Because that's all I need. I got one of the best builds in the video game. I have no issues scoring, playing defense, getting a block, getting a steal, just shooting over people, dunking on people. I have no problem. I'm, I'm great. But... I know that that's a problem for 2K because they want to give you something fresh. They want you to start from the bottom to grind back up and see what it's like to start from nowhere. You know what I'm saying? They, they've they made video games where they put us in the D-League. They've made video games that made us fail the Summer League challenges and stuff like that. They've put different challenges in the game where you couldn't even get out of the showcase game unless you got a, had an A-plus triple-double or you wasn't going number one. They made you restart that game over several times until you hit that mother sucker. But what I'm saying to y'all is, as far as the 2K vault goes, it should be for the items we buy because we pay for those items. They are cosmetic. They don't make us better in the game. I know what y'all saying. Yo, put over my VC. We'll talk about that because that's the third thing. You know what I'm saying? So... VC 2K is one of the biggest names in the gaming industry. One of the biggest. They have multiple video games out right now that use VC. Now, wouldn't it be great if we had a VC wallet? Whereas though we can buy VC, load it into that wallet and choose what video game we wanted to use it on with our emails. Now, in recent years, 2K has gotten so much better with figuring out how to link your 2K account with your PlayStation or with your XBL. And that's been great because I've logged into the My NBA 2K app plenty of times and have had no issues. I check, see what events is on for the day, and see how much VC I got. All of that stuff works. But I will end this game with probably over 300,000 VC. That is enough to get my next build for next year started. But I don't think it's going to get ported over. You want to know why? Because it's never been ported over. So for my third thing on the NBA 2K24 wish list is give us a VC vault that is able to be used on any of your video games that use VC as a currency and let that VC carry over forever. Because guess what? You will do a lot better with having that stuff pour over because people will know, oh, my credit card is linked to this. Or a, 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 a son or daughter could say, hey, mom, um, I have 60,000 VC from last year. I saved up. I did really, really good. Is there a possibility that you could buy me this? And they say, hey, no problem. You know what I'm saying? It teaches people how to save. Not only are you making a great video game, but you are teaching people the value of holding on to something. Because as it stands right now, once this game cycle is done and we're on the NBA 2K24, this game will be put in the back of my mind. NBA 2K23 is done. I'm on to the next, on next gen only. So give people things to carry over and teach them those values of like, oh, I could save this VC. I'm going to need it. I'm going to need it. Same thing with my team. MT and all that. You already know what it is. Y'all know how the game go. Wallets. Yes, sir. It's time to talk about that season pass. Ooh. I'm finna stir some stuff up. I'm finna press a couple buttons. I'm finna close somebody's hand in the door. I'm telling you right now. Season pass or seasons in 2K. It need to get revamped. Now, I said this last year or the year before, one of those wish lists. It's time for 2K to have a paid season pass. Now, I know what you're saying. Pod, you a sellout. Pod, I can't believe you would say that. How are we supposed to get better content if it's not a paid season? Because as it stands right now, y'all know what they doing to us? In these seasons, they giving us dribble moves. They're giving us jump shots. They're giving us dunking packages. They're giving us runway walks. They're giving us hats. They're giving us sleeves. They're giving us season outfits. They're literally giving us my team content because there's not enough content in my career to give to you. 
Ain't that crazy? Don't, don't, that don't make that much sense, right? So, this is what I propose. If 2K made a pay season, that means the VC would unlock the season, which means you would only have to pay for the season one time if you're a grinder because 2K will give you the currency to open and unlock the next season the entire year. It will be up to you to play the game and 2K can just sit back and say, hey, I think this was a good idea. And oh, as far as content, you better take them dribble moves out. You, if it's one thing that I am not happy about as far as seasons go, is putting dribble moves and other signature styles behind time walls. Because there are times in this video game where people are not active. People got, sh they got shit going on 2K. I'ma just be honest with you. They got real fucking lives, okay? And maybe somebody got cancer. Maybe somebody got COVID. Maybe somebody got tragically killed. Maybe they going through de depression. Maybe they got fired. Maybe they got injured to the point where they can't use their hands. Maybe they got, it's just so much different stuff that could happen to a person. And when you think about your, the consumers that consume your video game, your customers, you have to think, why will we put something behind a time wall? And then once that time wall is gone, it's a season exclusive. If you don't get it now, you'll never get it. That's not a good idea. It's never been a good idea, especially since it's not a paid battle pass. Now, if you do make a paid battle pass, I want to see plus five sleeves. I want to see bad slots that it will allow people to get a plus one on the badge that they have. Make them grind. Now, what I mean, people, I know I might be talking in circles. Y'all might not be understanding what the fuck coming out my mouth. What I'm saying to you is if you have a 85-3, right? And 2K makes a sleeve that gives you a plus five three. And I need that sleeve to work everywhere, 2K. Not just the park, baby. It got to work in every mode that deals with your my player. Okay. Now, y'all have great things for my team. I've seen the content. All right. I've seen it. As far as the badges go, if I have, let's say, bully on silver. There's a paid battle pass. There's a plus one, only one of them, a plus one to whatever badge you want. Give it to me. I'm a grind for it. I need it. Now, granted, I know people out there be like, yo, well, I should be able to use that on whatever badge whenever I want to. No, it's a build. This is just one build. You can't. One day get Hall of Fame posterized and the next day get gold bully. The next thing get gold blinders. The next day get gold unpluggable. The next day get Hall of Fame bailout. The next day. No, no, <laughs> you don't get to swap it for certain situations. You know what I'm saying? Now, I know we got core patterns now and everybody swapping these core patterns out and stuff like that. And getting extra uh badges, cord and stuff like that. That's cool. But when it comes to this battle pass, as far as the content go, the content Gotta be gameplay and cosmetic. Never signature styles, never jump shots, dunks, layup packages. You know what I'm saying? Not even emotes. I don't wanna see emotes in the battle pass. I wanna see items. That's what I wanna see. For instance, one of the biggest things that everybody always knows about 2K, right? You go on a winning streak, you get a fireball. Why not make the fireball a part of the paid battle pass and people actually get to play with the fireball? They don't have to be on a winning streak. I understand a win streak is a win streak, but that has a visual cue. As soon as people pop in a park, they see that the court is on fire. But give people other items in the game and items that are already in the game to use. Now, I've played the PC version of the game. 
I've seen cop outfits and real Santa Clauses and, and things of that nature. I've seen the mascots and stuff like that. That type of stuff should always be in a battle pass. Always. Because if you have a paid battle pass and a person has the ability to unlock a mascot every season with the battle pass, they'll grind. They'll play the game more. I know what you want. You want people to play the game. I understand. Money got to be made too. I understand that too. But you want people to play the game because we want people to play the game. We, the consumer, the, the customer, we want people to play the game because we need people to play the game. When I, when I log on, I, I, I swear on everything I love, I go spin the wheel and I run to matchmaking every single time. I don't go to the stage or any of what they call it. I don't go to the park. I don't go nowhere where I got to sit on dots. I run straight to matchmaking because that's what I was brought up on in 2K. 2K9, ranked matchmaking. You know what I'm saying? 2K10, we on my crew, matchmaking. You know what I'm saying? Once they start bringing blacktop in and all that, that was matchmaking. But then when the park came out and those dots came out, I was like, damn. I see all these people go AFK, be standing there for half an hour. I'm just like, yo, who got next? Yo, yo, I got next. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we need, we need that element, man. That's why it goes back to cross-gen and cross-play. We need more players. That's simple. Now, number five. Ah, this is probably the, the least thing that I'm worried about because you can never make any part of the community happy at all. Even if you think for one second, the devs, they just can't make you happy. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry, sis. They can't make you happy. Now, what I mean by that is we need to talk about gameplay. Now, within gameplay, there's many different tiers and I'll try to cover them all, right? When it comes to gameplay, the first thing that we talk about is builds. Now, 2K has had huge, huge success with the replica build system. The replica build system is amazing. Now, Granted, I've never made any replica builds because I wasn't making content on them. So I didn't really want to. And plus, I saw that the replica builds couldn't hold up a candle to my build. So I was like, oh, I don't need to. But they had a great, well, not had, but they have a great thing going in that. But when it comes to the builds, you'll never be able to make anybody happy. And what I mean by that is, you have to give people a helping hand. All right, 2K. What I mean by that is when people go into the builder, they need to know what build names are possible to make. Now, I know, 2K, you have been loving surprises since I've been working with the company. You know what I'm saying? When I went to the first ever community day, surprise, surprise. The next year, surprise, surprise. The next year, surprise, surprise. Even when Next Gen came out with a legend reward, surprise, surprise. Even this year, surprise, surprise. Everything has always been a surprise with y'all. And that's the biggest problem. People don't really like surprises. I know it might go against what your marketing plan and strategies and stuff are, but people hate surprises because when they see the surprise and the trolls get to come out and the trolls get to paint a certain narrative about said surprise everybody run with it everybody everybody and their mom runs with the narrative of 2k is this i ain't playing that why would you even play this why are you even still on this What's the reason you like this? Like people love to hate and you're literally making their jobs easier by holding things close to the vest and not telling us what we're prepared to play. So for gameplay and builds, my vision, when you load up NBA 2K, 
you have a very nice little home menu and stuff like that. And I'm going to be honest, the, the home menu from 2K23 is it's perfectly fine. I ain't no problem with it. Now, it could be a little bit more animated and stuff like that, but eh, this is minuscule things. I don't really care about menus. You go to my career, right? Now, my career has the start of my career, make a bill, right? Which is should be create a player. It shouldn't be make a new bill. It should be create a player. You should have as many slots as you want. I know 2K, you're going to have to up the servers, up the data storage, up the cloud, all of that. Let people create as many bills as they want. Let's do it like this. Let them create five of each. 25 build slots. I think that's cool. I think that should be fine. 25 build slots. Now, when they go into that builder and they pick point guard, they should be able to see what build names are available. All right. Now, what you should do is when they go into that build name, for instance, if they want to create a ball hawk, they go to the position and then it says ball hawk. They're like, ooh. Oh, ball hawk. Now nah, that name fire. Give them a template. Give them a, a, a literal template of the, the bare minimum things needed to be a ball hawk, which means if a 85 steel is the bare minimum to become a ball hawk, that should be the first thing that they see. Oh snap! I need an eighty-five-three. Oh, I need a I need a six-some wingspan. I gotta be at least six-four. And then they can t they can literally sit there before even going into the builder, messing with the attributes, animations, anything like that. They can say, "Oh, I gotta be this height, that wingspan," and when I look at my stats, I gotta have that as my highest stat in order to be a ball hawk. Now, I don't, I don't think I want to be a ball hawk anymore because it'll tell them like, yo, it take a certain amount of attribute points and that's going to put your overall up to nine, like 90 something fast. So if you like the first thing you got to do is when you go in there and these things are needed, they are stamped into the meta of the build. You can't take one away. You have to max it out before you move on to the next stuff. So if you want to be a ball hawk, you literally got to max your steel out first. That's the first thing you got to do. Whatever the requirements are to be that build name and they at that level, you got to put them there. Now, granted, some build six fours or whatever the case may be, they might even go up to 90 something, right? But what I'm telling you is if you have a bare minimum of what that thing has to be to be that build or else, they won't create a thousand builds. People won't be out here creating builds, getting a build corrupted and having a hundred thousand issues with their builds and not figuring out what build they on going into my career, just aimlessly, just losing their shit, spending tons of money and complaining about the game. Cause that's what they do. We spend money on the game, but there are a lot of people who spend money on the game and complain because they feel like they got gypped. They feel like, oh, my build can't do what this build does. Oh, what's his build on the court? Why can't I do that? You have to make the game more customizable. Now, granted, you guys have done a great job at giving people the keys. You've been giving us the keys for two years now. I would say three because that, <laughs> boy, that NBA 2K21 build, boy. Oh, that squirm. <laughs> man crazy but what i want to say to you is after builds right because once you once you do that once you make your build and you choose your, your min max and all of that of what you want your build name to be at every position point guard shooting guard small forward power forward center all of that right when we get the takeovers you need to put what is needed in order to have said takeover 2K, I know you love surprising people. You love making people figure things out. But I promise you on everything I love, if you give people a helping hand. Now, this ain't for me. I don't need a helping hand. I am a whiz at this. I do a lot of research. I watch a lot of videos. I be on Reddit. I be on Twitter. I be on TikTok. I don't need it. But other people, they just need a helping hand. There may be 
some 50 year old dude just want to load up 2k for the first time he not watching or buy tiktok to figure out what the best build is but he's willing to spend 1300 easy he's not watching content he needs a helping hand he needs to be told this build will be do this this build will have these badges this build needs a minimum max to be that name and this build can get these takeovers all in the first shot even before he wasting his time he like oh all right so if i make this build i get the slash and takeover and the shoot takeover i like that build then he could say oh now i can make a variation of it oh maybe i don't need a 73 this maybe i need it on 82 my so to, to what i like that's what people need they just need a helping hand that's all that they need because i promise you once you help people get what they're doing and they figuring it out and stuff like that. They'll say, hey, this game is pretty hands-on. And it's because you want to draw in casuals. You that's 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 the player base you want. You want to draw in casuals. For people that's in a competitive scene, they good. People that are on the casual side, slash content creator, slash can play competitive like me. I'll just thank you for doing it because it'll make my job easier as well. I'll just thank you. Now, beyond that layer, right? When we talk about gameplay, we talk about my career so much. We talk about how can it be better? What's the cutscenes about? What's the storyline this year? You know, we, we worry about that way too much. We don't play basketball as much no more. I know what y'all thinking. Pa, what are you talking? We don't play basketball games. Now, in the NBA 2K23 storyline, you were halted from playing your next games because you had to progress in the story. You had to go do certain objectives, watch certain cutscenes, and it put a strain on you building up your build the right way because guess what? A lot of people gave up on the story. They went to the park. They went to Pro-Am. They went to Rec. They went to the theater. They went to Annie Up. They just say, I can't do this. I can't play my career. Mm -mm. I'm not dealing with that. I got my statue. Don't get me wrong. I rocked with it a little bit, but I had some of the same issues as people. I put that leather jacket on. I got a black screen. I got an error code. A whole bunch of, whole bunch of stuff happened. But guess what? 2K fixed it because we were vocal. We, we weren't mad about it. We know that games come out with certain things and problems that a dev team just can't see in that moment. You know what I'm saying they they put in certain hours to make sure that it's working perfectly. The code says everything is good, boom, boom. But when you mix that in with PlayStation and Xbox and internet and all of this and clothing and essentials and accessories, and things are just bound to happen. You know what I'm saying? I, we've been in, we've had 2K games that stuff was broken for a long time, but they fixed it every single time. 2K fixed it. So when it comes to gameplay and storylines in my career and all of that literally let us play our games stop stop giving people a storyline just stop just give give us objectives to play and all side objectives they will literally be side missions they won't mess with the progression of our nba story because there are video games out there that have side missions and stuff like that but they're they're story mode games and when they have side missions, some games say, oh, you got to do this certain side mission to, to keep on the campaign. Or some games just say, go through the campaign. <laughs> Stuff going to get harder, but you know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing we can do. But it's basketball. We can change rookie. We can change the pro. We can change the all-star. We can change the superstar. We can change the Hall of Fame. We choose what we want to play on. So why are we being held back? from actually playing the game take it out take it just take it out if people choose not to go to the practice facility and get them boosts and stuff that's on them that's that's completely on them don't make people have to train just to play the next game nah just give them the objectives yo score 20 30 40 get 10 assists uh, uh, everything that you did this year where you had it set up, whereas though people had to, you know, have certain goals and stuff like that in game to get certain boosts and stuff like that. That's totally fine. But 
don't hold us back from the gameplay because I feel like my career should be offline only. And I'm going to tell you why there were many problems that I had trying to progress through the story. And when I would want to, let's say, look at my billboard, people on skateboards flying by me. I hear the skateboard over the, the commentary and stuff like that of your storylines and stuff. Let us not have any interaction with the online. If y'all going to bring back them stories, please, please, because it messed up the what's the what's the word I'm looking for? It, it just it messed up the overall experience of being in that my career scene at that time, watching that storyline, because I'm hearing skateboards, I'm hearing magic carpets, I'm hearing gliders, I'm hearing fast running shoes, I'm hearing go karts, I'm hearing uh, golf carts, I'm hearing bicycles, I'm hearing trikes, I'm hearing so many different things that don't belong in my story. Okay. Now, as far as overpowered builds and all of that, I don't need to put that on my wish list. Everybody knows there's always going to be an overpowered build. There's always going to be an overpowered jump shot. There's always going to be an overpowered dribble move and stuff like that. It's up to us to talk about it as, as a, a community and then bring it to 2K to say, hey, we feel like this is OP. Now, with builds, they can't take them out the game. But with other things, they can probably tune or tweak them. They could probably tune a dribble move, tweak a dribble move, uh, fix the contest windows on certain jump shots, fix green windows on certain jump shots. They don't have to technically take those things out. But if somebody makes a crazy build, I know for a fact that they've tweaked builds. You want to know why? Because when I created builds and I put out YouTube videos on my build creation, people came into my comment section telling me they couldn't make the build anymore. 2K tweaked it. So instead of taking builds away and stuff like that, 2K has already been tweaking in the background. They don't have to make announcements or huge social media posts about it. They do it in the background. That's what the dev team is for. They do everything in the background to make sure that things are balanced. Now, as far as the bills that have been made already, when that tweet comes out, you a lucky motherfucker, boy, because they ain't, they, ain't, they can't touch you. They can't listen. They can't touch you, bro. I'm just saying they can't touch you, man. You enjoy the way you play. You feel me? But I know that this wish list is probably too darn long. But this is what I do. I talk about the game. I talk about what I want to see. And the reason why I only wanted to make this wish list about five things is because the goal for 2K this year is to bring players back, bring new players in, and to keep current players engaged. So with the five things that I talked about today, I promise you, if 2K... Go ahead and start doing those things. We are gonna be ready. We are gonna be right. We gonna be. There will be a smile on a lot of people's faces to get the day the game drop. A lot of people, all the Christmas noobs and stuff like that, will come in and feel like, hey, I actually can understand this game a little bit better. I've never played a basketball game before. Oh, but this is helping me create my build. It's giving me step by step on what I need to do. And shoot, I'm gonna be honest. Having people like me, content creators, you know what I'm saying? The homie stacks over there at 2K right now. Having people do voiceovers on tutorials on how to do certain things, that should be in-game, in-house. Just imagine hearing my voice over a, 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 a build tutorial saying, hey, welcome to the builder. Now that you're about to build your NBA 2K build for my career and for the online experience of the park, pro-am, rec, and the theater, this is what you need to do. First, Figure out what build you want. Figure out what position you like because we got plenty of build names for you. Now, when you choose your build name, they will come with a certain type of attribute that far blows past every other attribute. For instance, if you want to be a blocker, you can go ahead and make a paint beast. Now, I'm going to let you know, if you build a paint beast, you won't be able to shoot. But we do have two-way stretch glass cleaners 
right below. Stuff like that, man. Just, and that's off the cuff. I ain't got no cuffs, but that's off the cuff. You feel what I'm saying? If 2K actually allows that casual experience to be explained, beautiful game. Now, part, rec, pro-am, uh, rep issues, um, not enough VC being given to players while playing the game, things of that nature, 2K know they got to fix that stuff. 2K know that a player need to earn way more than they will earn playing a my career game. They know they do because they playing up against real stiff competition, not some AI that we can manipulate and score 200 points on. We playing player versus player. So we should get more rep, more VC, all of that for online. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to put no numbers out there, no double, no triple, no none of that. What I'm saying is it's not just events that we need to get more rep. You got to come up with other ideas. Now, I've given you those ideas over the last couple of years. Now, you know, the times two at different parks and all of that. But I remember we was getting 0.5 at certain parks. So, you know, 2K, you got to work on that, man. But I ain't going to I ain't going to talk about all the issues. I ain't going to talk about all that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it up to you. If you're watching this video and you think there's something that I missed. And of course, I missed a lot. Please leave it in the comment section. And I promise you, I will send this video to 2K. I will send it to their dev team. I will send it to their marketing team. I will send it to their social team. I will send it to their PR team. Should I send it to the chief? I send it to the boss. You know what I'm, I don't, you know what I'm, I, I'm just here to have the same great experience as you. That's all that I want from 2K. I don't care about nothing else besides having fun with my friends because one thing my friends have done is leave the game. A lot of my friends, y'all, y'all see, y'all see all my friends. They all left the game because they can't enjoy it anymore. So bring that enjoyment back 2K. But I appreciate y'all for watching this video. Make sure you guys please hit that like button. You know, give me thousand, two thousand likes, whatever the case may be. Make sure you sub up if you are not subbed up. And make sure that you turn on noties, man. I'm back. King Kong. King Kong. King Kong. Appa. King Kong. King Kong. King Kong. 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 Kong.